certainly is. Now, I want to talk to you about something. Last week, I was watching the television, and uh, Bill Maher sat at a, a host desk like this one. He looked into the camera, like I'm doing now, and he talked on his show about fat shaming. He argued that it had gone away and needed to make a comeback. Take a look. Being fat isn't a birth defect. Nobody comes out of the womb needing to buy two seats on the airplane. <laughs> we have gone to this weird place where fat is good. It's pointing out that fat is unhealthy. That's what's bad. Fat shaming doesn't need to end. It needs to make a comeback. <laughs> Some amount of shame is good. Thanks for that, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sat at home and I'm watching this, and all I could think of was I was watching, I was like, oh, man. Somebody needs to say something about this. If only there was someone with a platform who knew what it was actually like to be overweight. And then I realized, ah, oh, that'll be me. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, no. Now, here's the thing. I actually have a lot in common with Bill Maher. I do. We shoot, we both shoot our shows here in the same building. We both host the second most popular talk shows on our network. And we've both made, <laughs> shall we say, questionable choices in our film careers. Bill was in a movie called Cannibal Women in the Avocado Jungle of Death, which is about... <laughs> True, about an all-female tribe of cannibalistic avocado farmers. <laughs> and I appeared in the classic film, The Lesbian Vampire Killers. <laughs> which is about lesbian vampire killers. No, don't you dare clap it. No. It's exactly as bad as you think it is, right? <laughs> I gotta say, like, that any time I've met Bill Maher in person, he has been nothing but pleasant and kind and nice, which is why I found it so surprising that he or anybody thinks that fat shaming needs to make a comeback because fat shaming never went anywhere. I mean, ask literally any fat person. We are reminded of it all the time on airplanes, on Instagram, when someone leaves a pie on the windowsill to call and they give us a look like. <laughs> Don't you dare! <laughs> Don't you... Now, there's a common and insulting misconception that fat people are stupid and lazy, and we're not. Right? We, we get it. We know. We know that being overweight isn't good for us. And I've struggled my entire life trying to manage my weight, and I suck at it. Right? I've had good days and bad months. <laughs> <laughs> I've basically been off and on diets since as long as I can remember, and, well, this is how it's going. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, but we're not... Here's the thing. We're not all as lucky as Bill Maher, you know? We don't all have a sense of superiority that burns 35,000 calories a day. <laughs> right? I kid because I love... Bill... I sincerely believe that what you think you're offering here is tough love, and you're just trying to help by not sugarcoating reality for fat people, even though you know how much fat people love sugarcoating things. <laughs> right? But the truth is, you're working against your own cause. It's proven that fat shaming only does one thing. It makes people feel ashamed. And shame leads to depression, anxiety and self-destructive behavior. Self-destructive behavior like overeating. When I watched that clip, I got up, walked to the freezer and grabbed a pint of ice cream. <laughs> I'm kidding. I was already halfway through the pint when I started watching. <laughs> but Bill may have made me finish it. He might have done. And this term, we're using this term, we're using this term fat shaming. We've come up with a name for it. Let's be honest. Fat shaming is just bullying. That's what it is. It's bullying. <laughs> And bullying only makes the problem worse, OK? I don't think stuff like this is going to solve the obesity epidemic. It's not just about being able to see a doctor. It's also about being able to see your Believe me, I can see a dick. <laughs> now, look. Now, look. Bill Maher makes some interesting points if you go back and watch it all, but there's a lot that he got wrong. 
uh, in this piece, including making the claim that Europe doesn't really have fat people. Europe doesn't look like this because Europe's not always eating for two. Your Honour, I'd like to present Exhibit A. <laughs> that Britain's relationship with Europe is strained right now, but I lived there for 37 years, and trust me, there are fat people in Europe, maybe not as many as in America, but the reasons for that are complex. In fact, this entire issue is a lot more complex than he's making it out to be. Now, Billy's right about one thing. He really, really is. This is a health problem. It's an issue that needs to be discussed clearly and honestly. It's an epidemic, and when you look at the numbers, it's terrifying. There are numerous reasons why people live their lives at an unhealthy weight. Junk food, portion control, a lack of exercise, these are all major contributing factors. But poverty is also an issue. A study conducted by the University of Michigan Health System found that childhood obesity is directly linked to poverty. But, fun fact, if you shame obese children, Whole Foods will give them free salads. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's not how Whole Foods works. <laughs> Sometimes genetics plays a role. You know, there's a molecular geneticist named Jeffrey Friedman who discovered a hormone called leptin. Le uh, defects in the leptin gene are linked directly to obesity. They are. And here's a fun fact. If you shame the gene, it actually fixes itself. I'm kidding. That's not how science works. <laughs> a lack of shame is not the issue here. If making fun of fat people made them lose weight, there'd be no fat kids in schools, and I'd have a six-pack by now, <laughs> right? <laughs> until... Until we make healthy food and healthcare more accessible and we properly educate people on nutrition and exercise, maybe we can hold back on the whole call fat people virgins until they lose weight strategy, right? And I believe that Bill's heart is in the right place. And I truly like that he cares about the condition of my heart. And I will. I will keep trying all the time. I am aware today that this is going to be a struggle that I will face for the rest of my life, right? But in the meantime, Bill, Please hear me when I say this. While you're encouraging people to think about what goes into their mouths, just think a little harder about what comes out of yours. We'll be right back. <laughs>